So it's come to my attention we needed a little bit of work with this. So I figured I'd create you a little screencast to help out. So let's do some graphing. We'll do some graphing of waves. We've, we've talked about oscillators. We started off with a lab on pendulums. So let's imagine for a second that this is a pendulum oscillating back and forth. So I started at 30 degree amplitude and it swings through equilibrium, goes to the 30 degree on the other side as it oscillates and it travels back and it travels through one full oscillation in this right here. It traveled through one full oscillation. In other words, if I have my pendulum, it travels, it goes do, 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 swings through here, it travels over, and it travels back. So it starts off here, it swings through, it's traveling through, it's halfway through the equilibrium point, travels all the way over halfway through. Notice, here's my halfway point. It changes its direction, it begins swinging back, it travels back through equilibrium, and then back to its original starting point. So we're looking at this in phase graphing. So I want you to see how we can graph or how I will graph. If it's in phase, it's probably easiest for us to look at this in terms of I'm going to graph this from 20 degree amplitude. I'm only changing the amplitude here. So I can draw this graph here. I'm going to draw it so that it comes through here and 20 degrees. So a 20 degree amplitude, notice. The only thing different is it just doesn't swing as far. And this one could have been a little bit, or it could have been a little further there, but I'm kind of going freestyle here. And it's going to look just like this. I'm just going to have a smaller amplitude. And I'm going to graph yet a third one. Hopefully you can see the color coding here. I tried to do red, blue, and black here. This one here is now in blue. So I've got 30 degrees is red, 20 degrees is black, and 10 degrees is blue. So notice, the only thing different, we can assume that these are the same string length smaller amplitude, that these are three that are all in phase, right? We can assume something here. We can say that these are the same string length, that they only vary in amplitude, that the periods of these are the same. They each travel through one full oscillation in the same amount of time, from start through one cycle, start through one cycle, start through one cycle. They just traveled a little differently, that they had just different amplitudes. They were pulled back different distances, that these angles were different. So, in phase. So let's look at out of phase. Let's look at out of phase here. So if I look at out of phase, I just drew one, I figured I'll just kind of pick up where I left off from the first part, from the example up here. So look here, so out of phase. And I don't want to dwell on this. There's really not a whole lot of your grade that comes from this, but this is it's important that we understand this so that we know where the graphs that we look at come from. So we kind of go back to the, to the basics of having to create them ourselves. So if I'm going to draw a graph here, you know, maybe red will be a little better, it'll stand out a little bit. And I'm going to draw this 180 degrees out of phase. I want to go back to the turn table, the, the turn table here. If this makes one full rotation, it travels 360 degrees. Well, this is my, my reference here. If I only make a half of a turn, or if, only, if, it's, if it's turned and it only goes halfway, that's only 180 degrees. It's only halfway through its cycle. And if it were one-fourth of the way, we'd call that 90 degrees. And if it were three-fourths of the way, we'd call that 270 degrees. And if it makes one full rotation, it's 360 degrees. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this, this, these degrees here to reference my oscillation. So here I've, I've drawn... This may be a tricky one, but I drew one and one fourth total wavelengths. But I'm only going to focus on from here to here. One wavelength, right? One oscillation. That my midpoint, halfway through this oscillation, halfway through here, is significant. If I'm going to draw this 180 degrees out of phase, I can look at this a couple different ways. I can look at this as if I'm shifting this graph over 180 degrees. In other words, I'm going to start it right here. I'm going to start it right here. I'm going to have it travel through here. And I'm going to have it travel back up and around. And then here, it's going to be coming back through 180 degrees out of phase. I, what, I, what I don't want to do is I don't want to get so caught up in drawing these in phase and out of phase that we, that we lose sight on what it is we have going on. In this case, if I have a pendulum, if I have this pendulum swinging back and forth, I'm going to add a second pendulum here. So I'm going to try to do this, try to do this under the camera. If this one here, oops, let me try the red one. If this one's swinging back and forth, right? So if it starts here, it's halfway through its cycle. Now I start the other pendulum 
and they are oscillating back and forth. So when one is going up, the other is going down, or however you want to you view that. But these are oscillating. They are at different locations, just as the graph is showing us that. As this is swinging this direction, this one is swinging in this direction, that they're a little bit different. So when I graph 90 degrees out of phase, I want you to see that that's halfway between 0 and 180. Right? I could label this 0. The midpoint here, there's my 90 degrees. Works out very nicely. It happens to be on the graph right here. And I would just essentially be graphing from here. And it'd be coming through. And I've essentially taken this what I sort of drawn in black and shifted it over. So the blue is actually very much like what I see with the black. And I've just kind of moved it and shifted it so we can, we can draw this, get this visualization. So it's in blue, is 90 degrees out of phase. So I know that that was interesting. I know that people had a, a question on that, but I got another one for you. I've got another, I want to make sure we get to this. And this is what the more recent concepts that we're looking at, speed, frequency, and wavelength. I want you to see this that we're messing with slinkies right now. We're playing, playing around with our slinky lab. The very important here. Higher frequency, lower frequency. That the higher frequency and this lower frequency, we're simply looking at the number of oscillations in, per, in some unit of time. So if I were to say that this here was 10 seconds, here we'd say, well, this lower frequency has only gone through one cycle in 10 seconds. And this one here has gone through one, two, three, four, five and a half. So this has only gone through one cycle. This is only one total wavelength. This is five and a half wavelengths. Many more cycles in 10 seconds. But now let's put that to what we did in class today. So let's, let's put numbers here. So I can reference here. This is one full wavelength. One full wavelength looks like this, right? One wavelength is one oscillation. And when I solve this, I'm putting time here. I know my total distance is 30 meters. So I can look at this a couple different ways. I know that this here is one and a half wavelengths, right? One and a half. So if I take 30 divided by one and a half, 30 divided by 1.5, you will find that you will get a very simple number here, 20. 20 meters. One wavelength is 20 meters. And therefore, if the time is 15 seconds, I can take 20, uh, excuse me, 15 divided by 1.5 wavelengths, and you'd find that the period, the time for one full oscillation is 10 seconds. Now, this might take a little practice. There's a couple different ways in which we can do this. But essentially, what I'm going to be asking you is, well, what is the period? Well, the period of one oscillation is the time we just solved for, is 10 seconds. And therefore, the frequency is going to be 1 over period of 1 over 10 which is 0 0.1 hertz. So the last part of this I'm going to ask you for is what is the wave speed? So I can solve this a couple different ways. Well, the speed, solving it one way, traveled 20 meters in 10 seconds for a wave speed of 2 meters. Oops, oops, it's not on the page. 2 meters per second. Another way I can look at this is wave speed is also going to be frequency times wavelength. So if I look at my frequency and wavelength, speed is going to be the frequency of 0 0.1 hertz times a wavelength, where am I at here? Wavelength of 20 meters. 20 meters. Do some quick math and you'll find that the speed is 2 meters per second. Now we need to start realizing that we can solve for wave speed a couple different ways. We can use our equation speed equals distance divided by time by provided data, and we can use the concept of speed equals frequency times wavelength, and you'll find that when we go back to frequency and wavelength, you'll find that these are inversely related. The larger the frequency, the smaller the wavelength. And thus, the smaller the frequency, the larger the wavelength.